Welcome in to Moving the Chains, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside John Epps. Jarrell Hendricks on the board here for all your election night coverage. Not not really. We do have our own polls coming out later, though. So check out for the check, uh, stay, stay alert for the polls later on in the show. But we are here, John, for our week 11 South Carolina High School football preview show. And that's right, week 11. Not a normal year, but we do have 11 due to the extension from Hurricane Helene. We don't have a full slate this week, but we've got a lot of big games, a lot of playoff seating stuff to be decided, a lot of region titles on the line as well, and just some darn, I mean, big ball games here this Friday. Yeah, got a couple of rivalry games. Um, you know, some of these games were, I believe, week seven. Um, I know there's a Daniel Seneca game that was supposed to be played earlier in the year. They're playing that this uh, this week, which obviously you don't like the circumstances, but cool that we're getting, a, you know, kind of rivalry games that, Maybe we're not originally scheduled to be the last game of the year. Yeah, here we are, last game of the year. So uh, it works out. It works out in that regard, and and some good football to be played. Should be a lot of fun on Friday, and it looks like good weather right now as well. But as always, guys, be sure to follow us here on Facebook, on Twitter slash X, on Instagram, YouTube, and more at Moving Chains M O V I N C H A I N S. Our website movingchains dot com. Our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Each week we do a weekly preview show about seven fifteen here on Facebook and YouTube. We go live, break down the biggest games and all the games across the state that week. We have a recap show that comes out on Sundays or Monday morning. Typically, we have coach interviews, player interviews, teams of the week, players of the week, food review Friday. Lots of really good stuff as well for you to check out each and every day, including. A interview with Arthur Wilkinson head coach Chris Carter coming out probably Thursday de- uh, Thursday night. A really good guy to talk to as his Bruins get ready for a big playoff run. John, always get your moving the chains merch. We've got some great hats here, some Richardson hats, black, gray, all kinds of really good stuff. You can check out mtcgear.sc at gmail.com. Email, email them there for all your questions. We have some T-shirts, a black T-shirt, a gray T-shirt, a pink T-shirt, a navy blue T-shirt. Really good stuff everybody the toboggans black and gray for the cold weather it's getting to be that time of year playoff football is here also the hoodies a white one and a gray one big logo on the back small logo on the front really good stuff you guys help support us help make the show better and better you like i said you get email that email right there mtcgear.sc at gmail.com or you can send us a message on social media wherever you want to as well but john any you know thoughts from you before we get going with our kona games of the week no, I don't think so. Um, really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm I'm really excited to see the the playoff brackets. I know we got some some new things with the RPI mm-hmm. set up uh, for for some of the the seating. But yeah, I'm just really excited about Friday night. And then um, as soon as Friday night's over, then we can start playing around with the brackets and seeing who's going where. So I'm I'm really excited about that as well. Will be a lot of fun this weekend as we get all that stuff finalized and ready to roll for the playoff push. But let's start now with our Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates Games of the Week, our Kona Games of the Week. Folks, feel free to hop in and comment. Love to hear from you. We've got five of the biggest games across the state. Let's start with a 5A matchup for a region title, John. Sumter traveling to Ridgeview. The Gamecocks at 9-0. and The Blazers at 6-3. and Region title on the line. Both teams playing really good football, undefeated in the region. The Gamecocks 65 to 28 over Westwood, averaging 49 on offense, 18 on defense. The Blazers 21 to 7 over Blythewood, 31 on offense, 21 on defense. Last year, Drill and I saw this game, a non region matchup, and Sumter handled Ridgeview very easily, 42 to 19. I don't know if we're going to see that scoreline again uh, this year, John, because both teams are playing really good football. Yeah, you know, Ridgeview, his uh, out-of-region schedule, they weren't great, but they played really well in this region. Um, and we talk about Sumter, you know, what's the knock been on Sumter the last few years? It's been the offense. Mm-hmm. Boy, it's not the question this year. Their offense is, is very, very good. They're scoring 46 points a game. Um, I have not seen Sumter play in person, but I did listen to the the Lugoff Elgin game, uh, the radio broadcast, and, boy, they uh, – the running the football for the Gamecocks just sounds like trouble, trouble, trouble. I got a stat for you there, John, right quick. Last week in that win over Westwood, 439 on the ground in that win. Yeah, and that, you know, I, I know they talk a lot about, uh, you know, Peoples gets a lot, or uh, Fortune and Peoples yep. get a lot of the credit there. 
but quarterback, and I'm looking for his name. Franklin here, Richardson. Franklin Richardson, a younger kid. I think he's a sophomore, tenth grader. at Sumter. Mm -hmm. Um, big kid, and he is. He was really the problem for Lou Elgin in that game that I listened to. People did not play that game, mm -hmm. but Richardson's the one that really carried the load and was the one that the demons just were not able to stop. Now, Lou Elgin's not the same talent level as Ridgeview. Ridgeview has a very good offense in mm -hmm. their own right as well. Um, very, very uh, dynamic group on that end of the football field. Uh, Gidron mm -hmm. over there for Ridgeview, obviously a, a very coveted prospect for the Blazers. A lot of talent on the football field for this game, but I, I look at the resume for both of these teams and I got to go with Sumter. You know, the last loss that Ridgeview has is against Camden. Mm -hmm. They gave up 43 points against a Camden team that wants to run the football. Mm -hmm. um, they're not very, they're not, is going to be as big as Sumter. You know, that Camden is good. That They're, they're quick. Quarterback Wyatt Thompson, he's fast. He's he can hit a hole. He can hit the corner quickly. If they had trouble stopping Camden's run game, I think they're going to have a really hard time stopping Sumter. I'm not saying that any other part of Ridgeview's game is is lacking in this comp in this in this matchup, but I think their inability to be able to stop Sumter's run game is going to give them a very, very long shot at winning this game. I, I see Sumter scoring 40-plus points in this matchup. Yeah, last week, quarterback Franklin Richardson had two touchdowns. Remember, John Peoples, a buck, 22 more touchdowns. You mentioned Cam Fortune, the younger brother of O'Donnell Fortune at South Carolina. Now, he's a really good player for them. Receiver, the Bay kid out wide is a, is a difference maker for them. Defensively, edge. Anthony Addison, the South Carolina commit, big game last week, seven and a half tackles, two TFLs, and one and a half sacks. J.B. Burson at linebacker, Tamaris Thompson, Durant in the secondary. Those guys kind of lead that group. You know, Sumter is always going to be big and physical. They're always going on defense, and that offense is really, really matching this year. You mentioned it, John. John Peoples now is now the Sumter career rush touchdown record holder, which, wow. I mean, is really impressive there for what he's done. On the Ridgeview side, quarterback Trey Howard, the young gun, gunslinger, getting a lot better throughout the season. He is a kid that will be a problem the next two years. Running back Spencer Bobian, 18 for 125 last week. But the star of the game was Christian Jackson. Two TD catches and a punt return touchdown accounted for all three scores for the Blazers in that win. Defensively led by Cleve Tellery and Daryl Spencer. Outen as well at the linebacker spot as a big-time player for them. But they had a lot of penalties last week. In a game like this where – you know, you may not be the favorite if you're looking at it on paper. You can't have stuff like that to kind of get in your way and make it even tougher for you in a big-time matchup when the region title's on the line. No, certainly, you know, you can't give up, jump off sides on a third and four and, and give them a first down there or, you know, stop them on third down. But, you know, uh, a dead ball foul, you know, you know, basically takes away your possession and gives them another first down. You do that kind of things against the Sumter team, you're going to have no chance. Yeah, and I've been super impressed with that Gamecock offense, man. You mentioned it. That's typically the the kind of sticking point. What worries you about these guys? You know, do they have the playmakers? Do they have the big playability? This year they do. What Peoples and Fortune and Richardson bring to the table is a different level for Coach Barnes' squad. They're a team that has been just kind of laying in the weeds in 5A, you know, have just beaten everybody in front of them 9 and 0. Haven't really played any close games since that White Knoll comeback win early on in the year. It's been hammering folks since then. I think the Gamecocks too big up front. I think they get just enough big plays. I think they win this game on the road and, and clinch the region title. But it should be a fun ball game down there uh, at Ridgeview for sure. Yeah, I think so. And also to make that, that white and old game, they came back from way behind. Yes, they did that game too. So they they are they're comfortable. Maybe not comfortable. I don't know if anybody's comfortable coming from uh, way far behind, but they can do it. When, yep. You know, I talk about the run game, then you keep it on the ground. You think, well, shoot, if, if someone gets ahead of them, maybe they can't come back. Not the case. They've done it. Well, one thing I will say in Richie's favor, um, this is probably Sumter's best opponent to date playing Ridgeview. Um, you know, maybe yeah. White Knoll, but probably this Ridgeview team. On the flip side, Ridgeview's been in some big games. You know, they played yeah. Dutch Fork early on in the year. They played Northwestern. They didn't win those games, but they did get that experience against a really a couple of really good football teams there. But I still think Sumter – wins this game on the road. Jarrell, comments from you or from the chat on this 5A uh, region title we have here between the Gamecocks and the Blazers? 
Man, y'all did ju- your homework this week on election night, man. You, you got all my talking points out the way. I got nothing. Um, again, I think Sumter, you know, outside of that white and old game, they have thumped everybody they've played. Um, Ridgeview, I do like what they're doing. That's great that they dealt with some adversity early on and were able to recover from that on a five-game winning streak here. Love Trey Howard. Mm-hmm. Obviously, missing his top target and Jordan Gidron there is definitely – not been ideal, but they've been able to to manage without him. So um, I think Ridgeview is a much improved team. I think they're probably a year or two away. The Sumter team is poised to make a you know a run at a state title. So I just think that's the difference in the game. So going with the Gamecocks here as well, guys, and I'll yeah, it, throw some comments up here for you. Yeah, and this is Region Five Five A as well for you guys who may not be familiar with the new stuff here in this first year of, of the realignment. Why it says how I think battling bishops. Region champs for Bishop England. You know, we'll talk to, yeah. them, talk to them here in a little bit. There you have that awesome season there for Coach Hall. I think eight and two now. Great to see that. Chris, appreciate you being here, man. Got a big game for you guys to talk about here in a minute. Zach's region title week for the Red Devils. He's a betting man. The Red Devils win. Yep, they got a big one. Kevin, Brown, appreciate you joining us as, as always, my man. Give a shout out to Cope, South Carolina. Like, I had to look I it up. It. I had to look I it up. It. It's Orangeburg, you, population of 33. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Chris says, Spartan McGatney for the Region Championship Hate Week Part 2. Yeah, well, that was one of our games of the week, Chris. We get to here in just a minute. Texas, I'm here to brag. Big hearts for the told you. You're right, man. You Those did. Red Foxes are super, super impressive. I'm not going to you know, toot my own horn, but one of us did pick Hartsville on the show last week. But a uh, huge win for them, man. They looked really, really big and really good win there for them. Ricky White says, Irmo for the win. We'll get to that one here later on as well. Ricky, Jadon says he's on time. Go Louisville. The Lions are playing great football. Shay says Spartanburg. We'll get to that game here in a second they as well, rolling. Shay. A lot of big ones between those teams. Chris, good seeing you in here, man. Great to meet yeah, you on Friday you. as well. The Panthers playing good football. Cam says Drell told him to come in here and comment that Strong Throne would upset Friday. <laughs> Drell, Cam's here, man. You told him to get in here. He, he did it for you. I appreciate you, Cam. Hey, hey, much respect. Much respect. I love it. I, I don't think that's going to happen, but hey, I respect you saying it. <laughs> I love you as always, Cam. Appreciate you, buddy. Travis, what's up, guys? Good to see you, Travis. Uh, looking forward to going through this full slate. Jonathan says, don't count the Hearts for Red Foxes. You certainly can't, can't do last now. week, man. They're a bona fide top uh, five team here in the state in 4A. Chase says, don't sleep on the Rebs this week. Hey, they've got a they chance to, to win the region if they win this game and by the right margins and whatnot. So we'll yeah. see how that shakes out. Ty Mary says, Sumter big three on defense. No doubt about it, man. That side of the ball, they are great. A, a big Still time stud at each level, it feels like there. Of course, it's Batesburg by 30. <laughs> hey, they were super They're impressive like really last Friday. Certainly could happen. Deidre said we said it's going to be close. to Louisville <laughs> by 30. We missed that one. Uh, that Lions defense came to play. Uh, I think he held Lamar to 78 total yards. I saw, man, just an awesome performance by the Lions on Friday. Let's keep rolling, guys. Our second Kona game of the week, a big one down in 4A, another region title on the line, John. That's great collegiate at 7-2. and two. Traveling to the Jackets Nest to take on North Augusta at eight and one. These teams did not play last year. Obviously, we're different classifications. Now they're in the same region. This is the region four for a title. Great collegiate big win over Gilbert, 42 to nothing last week. North Augusta 45 to 21 over Midland Valley. The War Eagles, 34 per game on offense, 15 on defense. Quarterback Tyler Waller, 11 for 15, 136, two touchdowns last week through the air. Another 80 yards rushing, another touchdown on the ground. Running back B.J. Montgomery went 14 for 134, three TDs. Got the receivers in Job and Gant out wide. Defensively, Trey Singleton, Michael Bullware, Aiden Legger, Zeb Taylor, really big on both sides of the football, John. For North Augusta, 38 per game on offense, 16 allowed on defense. Quarterback Corey Tillman, five touchdowns last week, four passing, one rushing. A little bit different for Corey there. He's really coming along as a passer here the last few weeks. Running back Michael Doe. I don't have his last week stats exactly, John, but in region play, they are now 6-0 and in the region. He has 1,700 rushing yards, 18 touchdowns in the region alone, region. I believe is what I've seen. Wow. If that's wrong, I apologize, but I think I saw that. That's nuts if that's the case, man. He's, he, he, he has been killing it lately. Uh, Sturgis, Campbell, and Smith are all options out wide. Malcolm Gaston up front is a big offensive lineman. De- defensively, linebacker Alex Powell had a big pick last week. Basket and Dante Bell are playing well. Ty Burke on the back end here. Two teams that, you know, we kind of saw this game coming. You know, this is the one that was going to be originally played during the hurricane week. And when it got rescheduled to the end, we're like, that's the region title. It's coming down the pipe, man. And here we are looking forward to a big 4A matchup. Yeah, it's a really fun one. Uh, again, this is cool to see this game 
last week of the season now instead of, you know, week seven. And these are two – I think this is another really good matchup. We had a lot of these kinds of games, I thought, uh, last couple of weeks mm -hmm. where you have a really good offense, really good defense. Gray's defense has really played strong last few weeks uh, in, this, in this region play. And North Augusta offensively has been very, very good last few weeks as well. This is going to be a really good match of that North Augusta offense, that great defense. Um, and all across Gray's roster, you know, B.J. Montgomery, we, we recognize these names mm -hmm. that have been at Gray for two, three years. Played now, a lot of football. Like. Yeah, a lot of experience. A lot of big football, too. Not just Friday night games, but big-time Friday night games. Games just like this. Gray's got the experience um, in, in this game. They've got the confidence as well. I like North Augusta in this game. I, I think I think these two teams are very, very – I just have to say this all the time. I think these two teams are very evenly matched up. I'm going with North Augusta just because they're at home. I think it's going to be that kind of a – that close of a ball game. Um, I believe in Gray because I've seen them win so many of these big games. But it's been at the, the 2A level. Um, this is a big-time 4A region title game. I'm going to start with North Augusta on this one. And this is a game, too. you got to remember, Coach D'Angelo Bryant for Great Collegiate not going to be on the sideline. You know, as part of their, um, I guess, punishment for the, the recruiting violation is he is not allowed to coach the rest of the season. So he, so Trey Sullivan and Coach Bayer are taking over as the kind of the interim head coaches there. So that's a big piece missing him on the practice field and, and obviously at the games, too. Man, your leader, I know the kids are kind of trying to rally around that, but that is a big loss at this point in the season, it feels like, you know, not having your head coach there. But on the North Augusta side, man, you mentioned the offense. I love what they're doing lately. They've been so balanced. Last week, they had 223 passing, 263 rushing for 486 total. Man, really balanced on the ground. And the defense has stepped up as well. You know, they bottled up a pretty good Midland Valley rushing tackle. So we held them, I think, to you know just over 100 yards. Doing a great job there. When Drell and I saw them earlier on this season against uh, Strom Thurmond, really impressed with their line. Both sides of the ball, I feel like, played great. Uh, you know, especially the defensive line really held up well and, and made some, some, some good uh, push up front. So they're playing playing good there, but they have a problem similar to Ridgeview. A lot of penalties last week. Got to cut down on those. Can't have that in a big game like this. But playing at home is a big, big piece, John. You know, one thing that that does, I think, go in the favor of North Augusta and, and why I really uh, am high on this team is they have home run hitters with Doe and Tillman, man. They can score from anywhere. Just, just last week, here's some of the touchdowns. Tillman, 40-yard run. Doe, 87-yard run. 33-yard pass from Tillman, 30-yard pass from Tillman, 40-yard pass from Tillman. I mean, these are big plays, and that's just in one game. I just listed off, what's that, five, five, you know, 30-plus yard touchdowns. I mean, that is huge when you have guys like that can take it to the house every single play. They have that big playability that you need to win ball games like this down the stretch. And that's against a Millen Valley team that's been playing a lot better football mm -hmm. lately, too. Um, that's a Millen Valley team that's a pretty good team. Uh, played great, very competitively. Yeah earlier in the year as well. Uh, Mustang's solid group, so to be able to do that against Midland Valley, a, a decent Midland Valley defense, yeah. too, very impressive. Yeah, I, I'm going to lean North Augusta here. I think it's going to be, a, obviously, like all these, a close ball game here, but I like the potential of, of the home run from the Yellow Jackets. I think at home as well, I think they win this ball game. Should be a, a lot of fun. And one more note I do want to bring up is that Gray Collegiate does have a, a hearing with the executive committee on Thursday of this week regarding a possible ineligible or, or eligibility of a player. I don't know to what extent. It, it could be something that comes out where if he's not granted eligibility, they could be out of the playoffs. I don't know all the details, but that's coming out Thursday. If, if that goes the wrong way, you wonder if, if, if the Gray kids, if they pack it up, if they rally around it. I, I don't know. So that's a big piece as well of this, of this uh, whole situation that's happening on Thursday during the day. We'll see how that shakes out. But I think we're both leaning the Yellow Jackets here, but it should be a fun ball game. Drill thoughts from you or from the chat. I'm sure the chat has got some good comments on this 4A game here. For sure, yeah, definitely got some good stuff in the chat here that I'll be posting in a little bit. Man, this is just two teams. Obviously, you get to this point, you're good. So that's, you know, doesn't need to be overstated here. Uh, just going to lean. I like going against you guys. I'm going to lean with Gray in this one. Uh, it's always fun to pick against you guys on uh, on the shows on Tuesday. Uh, just great collegiate. I looked at their schedule. They've, they've really, really battle tested. Not to say that North Augusta hasn't played some good teams, but I think that Gray has played a more difficult schedule. Yeah. Um, I know they're making that jump from 2A up to 4A. 
But I feel like maybe they're going to rally behind, you know, losing losing Coach Bryant there and, you know, go into a hostile environment. I feel like this program has been like everyone's against them um, since they probably started. So they've always had that chip on their shoulder. Um, I just like Great Collegiate a little bit more in this one, but it, it should be a close game. Um, obviously, when we call it a close game, it usually is not. So we'll see what happens. But I like yeah. I like the War Eagles in this one. And like I said, they could have some more fire, you know, to, to some fuel to that fire after that Thursday hearing. But Drew, I do want to ask you, you know, what do you think with Coach Bryant not being there? How big of a, a difference is that? I know obviously, a lot of times on game day, it maybe not be the the biggest deal because you got your stuff set and all that. But not being able to participate in practices and just just for almost not like a moral type support type deal. How big is it not having him there in these key key games here down the stretch? I mean, I think you got to look at it as a huge disadvantage even on yeah. game day. I mean, he controls the operations from timeouts to overseeing everything, and it pulls away from your coordinators who are, you know, having to be looking not just at their defense or just looking at their position groups and things like that and, and kind of pitch in everywhere else to kind of fill that void. So I think it's a distinct disadvantage. I think it's just something that maybe they can use to their advantage, you know, as a rallying cry. But you cannot understate, you know, the – the importance of your head coach, you know, especially in a big time game against this for a region championship. No doubt. Let's see what we got from the chat here on this region four for a uh, title game. Chris is going to us to about seven. Yeah, I can believe that. Yep. Course is by 21. Ooh. Okay, Corn, I like it. Get, get her to pass the sticks. I hear you. Uh, let me see if I got some more actual. We got a rest in peace, Gray. <laughs> Gray by 40 says Tay. Okay. Ooh. Now that would uh, shake up some some stuff in the polls, would it not? That would that be a big time be... if they could pull that off. Maybe yeah, not. that's it on that game. We have some other things here. Someone's calling me out for picking uh picking Saluda last week. It was me. I was I was sleeping on Saluda. All right, sleeping on Baseburg Leesville. <laughs> sleeping on Baseburg Leesville there. So uh, but yeah, I think that's all the comments on this game. Let's uh move to the next one, guys. Our third Kona game of the week. Man, this one always a big game, John. Uh, and it's even bigger this year with the region title on the line. That's the Spartanburg Vikings at 9-1, and one, traveling to the reservation to take on the Gaffney Indians. Or excuse me, both teams at 7-1, and one, not 9-1. and one. We had some some missing games there due to uh, the hurricane. So both teams at 7-1. Spartanburg and Gaffney last year was a thriller with Gaffney winning 19-14. to 14. Last week, the Vikings big over Riverside 56-20. to 20. Gaffney kind of a get right game against Wade Hampton, 43 to nothing, John. These two teams, it feels like are almost trending in the opposite directions, but yet Gaffney's still not like losing football games. You know, it's like if like Spartanburg is playing really good right now, just getting better and better and better. Gaffney continues to kind of win, had the one slip up uh, against Dorman, but they're just not playing that same level as they were early on in the season. Can they find it this week against the Vikings, or, or what do you think happens in this matchup? I. I've seen Gaffney play too much football and this program to play too much football to say they're going to get beat up and blown out in the game. And I don't think that's going to happen, but on paper, I think Spartanburg is going to win. And I don't know how competitive it's going to be on paper, <laughs> but this is Gaffney we're talking about. Um, you know, this game it's at the reservation as well, um, which is a big deal. Mm hmm. It's, you know, crowd's going to be there for the region championship. Well, potentially, right? I it is know. region title. Okay, it is so region title. Region yep. title for the winner. Uh, just Gaffney flat out is not playing their best football right now. They're a better football team than what they've been playing. But since early September, they have just not been there offensively. Defensively, they've been fine. Hmm. Defense has been good. Um, offensively, they have really sputtered uh, last few weeks. Um, I don't see Gaffney winning this game if they continue to play like they had the last almost two months, really, um, you know, since early September. Spartanburg, only, as you mentioned, they are red hot Surging. right now. Yep. Um, they've been playing good defense for the last few years under Coach Hodge. Now, the last few weeks, that offense has caught up to the defense. The offense playing incredible football. Uh, you know, last two games they've put up, 58 on Burns, 56 on Riverside. And that's a Burns team. They have been playing a lot better football. Good defense, especially. Especially defense. They've yeah. been playing some good defense. Um, have not seen Spartanburg play this year. I don't know. I, I know uh, 
young man Lynch has run the ball pretty well for mm -hmm. them. But I don't know if the last two weeks they have been putting the ball in the air a little bit more, if they have just been running the ball better. I'm not sure what to attribute that to. But um, the fact that they have been playing so good offensively, Gaffney even sputtering, it's just a perfect storm uh, right now for the Indians. I think Spartanburg wins this game. I think they win by two or three scores. For the Vikings, 37 on offense, 14 on defense on the year. Quarterback Trey Burke has really grown up. You mentioned Trenton Lynch, you mentioned Trenton Lynch last week. had four rushing touchdowns. They had seven total rush touchdowns last week, so all their scores were on the right. ground. You've got uh, Rice and Choice out wide, backup running backs. you got Sutton and Logan there. The offensive line is really good, really deep. Have played well all season long. Defensively, led by the linebackers, Cam Rich, Smith, and Peyton Jones. I think Smith is a, is a strong bowler. I believe Jones is a north-south guy. Some really good guys there in the middle. Defensive lineman Corey Cheeks is a good player, along with Quincy Haywood. On the Gaffney side, 31 on offense, 14 on defense. Quarterback Javon Gilmore, kind of a bounce-back game last week. 13 for 22, 17, three touchdowns. A big piece for them. Jaden McDowell is back at running back. Got kind of his feet wet last week. You know, just kind of got a couple carries, a couple catches here. But I'd expect him to kind of lean heavily on him this week in this matchup. Receivers, Jamarcus Smith, man, he is an absolute playmaker. I call him a receiver. I should probably call him an athlete, man. He has been special this year. Listen to this, John. He's got four games with over 100 receiving yards, two games over 100 rush yards, and he scored a touchdown in every game this season. So he's getting it done. Awesome. Also in the return game, he's had a big return, a couple big returns for them. He is awesome all over the field for the Indians there. Offensive lineman Shed Surratt, the Carolina commit, the Mr. Football finalist. Also work, getting some work in a defensive line lately, playing well there for them. Linebacker Andrew Roop is a monster in the middle. Defensive lineman Josh Corey is good. I love Zion Ratchford on the back end, along with Isaiah Foster Boyd. I think a key thing for gapping this game, John, it's it's – key for every game you can't turn it over and that's been a bit of their problem sometimes they get a, a big fumble when they don't need it or you know throw a pick when they don't need it they can't have that happen to against a good Spartanburg team like this because those Vikings man they are playing such good football right now I think for the key for me I think that getting defense is really good they're doing a good job of kind of bottling, bottling up that Spartanburg run game can Spartanburg get the pass game going you know can Burke find you know, choice or rice a few times out wide to kind of make some big plays and loosen up a little bit. I think if you just try to run against Gaffney all night long, that's probably not going to work. That's going to be tough. That Gaffney defensive front is very good. We, we saw them really uh, stifle a jail, a really good JL man uh, backfield. Gave up a lot of points to JL man, but they made man throw the ball in the air mm -hmm. to score those points. Um, I think for both teams, it's about patience. Yeah. I, I think. You know, Spartanburg, hey, you want to run the ball, you, you stick to it. Mm -hmm. If, you know, set first sec, first half, you're not getting a whole lot on the ground. I think I think the game plan, you stick to it, third, fourth quarter, you break one or two, that may be all you need. You yeah. Know, this could be another one of those, you know, 17 to 10 type ball games where, you know, you score once or twice, you win the game. Yeah. Um, I think patience it's for Gaffney too. You know, don't you don't have to force Gilmore throwing the ball downfield. You know, McDowell, if he's 100% healthy, lean on him as much as you can. Because, again, your defense is very, very good. You may only need to score two or three times, if that, to win the game. Mm -hmm. um, I think patience for both sides is going to be big to not press and make that big mistake, not commit that turnover um, or, you know, just unfor – I'll say unforced penalties um, or, you know, penalties, holding calls away from the ball, that kind of thing. Um I think whichever team shows a little more patience with their run game, I think will go a long way Friday as well. Yeah, and then looking also at the special teams. I mentioned Jamarcus Smith. He's had big returns for them all season long. For Spartanburg, they got maybe the best kicker or one of the best kickers in the state. Will Love made a 54-yarder, I think, two weeks ago, man. That is a weapon to have in high school football, especially in a close game like this uh, down at the end. But where are you going to this one, John? Because, you know, for me, when I'm doing my research, looking at it, it looks like Spartanburg is playing better. Looks like Spartanburg is, you know, awesome right now. Gaffney not playing great, but it's at Gaffney, and weird things happen at Gaffney. I'm going to go with the Indians at home to win this game. Maybe a big punt block, maybe a big return, maybe a, a pick six. I, I don't know, but I think Gaffney finds a way at home like they tend to do, it seems like. That Dorman game was at home as well. <laughs> that's Three that's weeks ago, the, don't care anymore. <laughs> that's the problem I have. Um you say all these things, it looks like Spartanburg's doing this. It looks like Gaffney. They are. Yeah. Spartanburg is playing good. Gaffney. Again, I think it's unfair 
it's unfair for me, unfair for us to say Gaffney's not playing good. Gaffney not, they're not playing bad because yeah. they're winning football games. They've lost one game by two points. Um, they could just be playing a lot better. We know what they're capable of. We know the talent that they have on that football field. I think Spartanburg wins by 10. Gaffney's got the ability to win by 10. Um, if they play, if they play a good game, if they play like they did for three quarters that we saw against JL man, I think they win this game. Yeah. Um, then, you know, that fourth quarter JL man had a great quarter, came back, tied that game to overtime. But for three quarters, Gaffney really outclassed JL man. If they play like they did in those three quarters against Spartanburg, there's a good chance they're going to win. I just don't know that they are because I haven't seen it in so long. Um, they've got the ingredients, you know, Coach Jones, he's done it plenty, plenty of times. Yeah. You know, there, there's there's no question that they can't do it. I'm just not confident in picking them because of what I've seen the last few weeks compared to what Spartanburg and Coach Hodge done the last few weeks. Because no Coach Hodge, he can do incredible things as well. It did at Chapman for years, mm -hmm. um, and he's been getting that Viking program I think better, better, and better um, in his short tenure so yeah. far as Spartanburg. I'm picking the Vikings. I'll stand by it. I'll say they won by 10. I think it's going to be a double-digit win for Spartanburg. I'm looking at like a 28-17 a, like a kind of say, It does feel more low scoring for sure, um, I think, than, than what we you know might see some other ball games. But, Jarrell, thoughts from you or the chat on this one here. Um, you know, John and I are on different sides. I don't feel great about it. I don't either. But that's where we are. I'm worried. I'm worried. Come compelling arguments gentlemen i think you both have great points um if this was anybody other than gaffney and how they're playing right now i would say you know spartanburg's gonna win this game by you know 30 points something like that just because gaffney has played with fire all year but they're playing at home coach jones typical gaffney fashion is, is things like that i'm still going spartanburg i think spartanburg fundamentally is the better team um they seem to be the healthier team as well um, I think it would be tough to pick Gaffney in this football game um, with how the two sides are playing. I mean, Gaffney's played, what, three overtime games? I mean, a bunch of one-score games, dealing with people in and out of the lineup. So, I mean, you just got to go with Spartanburg here, in in my opinion. Uh, but who knows, man? It, it could be one of those wacky ones. I would not be surprised if Gaffney found a way to win it. Especially in November, region title on the line. A little bit of chill we, in the air. We've seen yep. this story before. Um, Most definitely. Andrew Root oh, broke no. his hand, club on his hand. Okay, so he'll Wait, be able to play play. linebacker. I, I wonder how much that'll affect him. You know, he was a, a big back, short yardage guy for them too. Don't know if he will be able to get any carries anymore, but good to have him still on the defensive side. Let, let him be able to be in the be in the mix there. Prentice is a good team. One loss to Dutch for exactly right, and they beat a good South Point team earlier on in the season yeah. as well. Spartanburg has played really good football all season long. Chosen says Spartanburg by seventeen. Yeah. I, you know, I think I will say this. I feel like if Spartanburg wins this game, it's going to be by multiple scores. I, I think if Gaffney wins, it's got to be a close game. Like I don't think Gaffney's going to blow out Spartanburg, I don't think. Uh, but I think if it's a close game, I'm leaning Gaffney. Uh, a two- to three-score game, I'm leaning Spartanburg, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Andrew Root, if there's a kid that would look very just in form playing with a club on his hand – it's that <laughs> John keep doubting him, says Chris, the whole season. The rest of the season. Hey, I got you, I got you, Chris. <laughs> I, can that. I picked you guys. Come on, Chris. <laughs> oh, man. That's it. Go on this one. Go to the next one. And guys that are in the chat, we are going to cover all of the games that you keep mentioning. Definitely get to Batesburg, Saluda. Um, Batesburg, Strom getting, Thurman, you mean. Or excuse me, Batesburg, Strom Thurman, excuse me. So we'll get to the other ones, Daniel, Seneca, all the good ones that we have on, on the docket. Our fourth Calling a game of the week, John. This is a game that has not been played for quite a while. It probably should be played every year if you look at the proximity of these two teams. And I know we've had a, a lot of big games we mentioned so far this this you know this show, but this has got to be the biggest one in the state. And that's nine and zero Irmo, the Yellow Jackets, traveling across town to take on Dutch Fork, the Silver Foxes at eight and zero. Both teams undefeated, region title on the line. Coach Brand, Coach Knotts, two of the best to do it in the state, John. This is going to be a fantastic matchup. Cannot wait to see that environment between just a, a you know a community that's going to love getting after it on Friday night. Yeah, and this is, you know, a lot of you out there probably know this and understand this. 
know, Irmo is a very historic program, has been a, a really, really good program for a long time. I grew up watching Georgia Rogers' son uh, playing state championship game at Williams Bryce for Irmo. They've had some really good teams, uh, very, very um, storied, mm -hmm. storied group. It's the first time in a while Irmo has been really good again. They were solid last very year. Very good last year, too. Yep. Really good this year at the 5A level. Really exciting for that Irmo community, that Irmo high school community, which was the high school in Irmo until Dutch Fork came along. And really, I would say it's probably maybe roughly 10 years ago when Dutch Fork just started getting good at good in athletics. You know, very good baseball program. Obviously, the football program, um, when Coach Knotts came in, came into town, really elevated that program to now the premier program in the state um, and has been a dynasty. I think probably the biggest dynasty since we've seen the Burns dynasty, um, mm -hmm. you know, early 2000s. Yeah. Obviously, Abby Villas, too, is going yeah, to have, well. have a word I think with in that. Five, five yeah, for level, sure, but, for um, sure. You know, this is a really cool storyline for, for Irmo, this, you know, city championship, uh, really cool stuff, really good teams. I want the – and I sound like, uh, you know, someone's – grandmother going to a big game i hope both teams have fun and play well i i want to see a competitive game i hope we see a competitive game i'm worried that we don't because we haven't talked about dutch fork a ton this year mm -hmm. and it's because of the scores yeah they, they've just railroaded about everybody that they have played especially in region play um I this defense is is something special. It is really something special. And I think Irmo and any other team in South Carolina, the South, wherever, it would have a hard time scoring points on this Dutch Fork defense. Um, nothing against Irmo. I just don't know that they're going to, and it's nothing against Irmo. I just think this Dutch Fork defense is good enough to stifle them to be able to win this game. Um, I hope we see a one score game. I don't know. I, I, I'm feeling like we're going to see like a 28 to 10 kind of game, 28, 14, maybe. Um, but I hope we see a competitive game. Just that Dutch work defense is so doggone good. And I know they're li just licking their lips about Friday night. Cause this is going to be a great stage for them to really show everybody, yeah. the state, the country, how good they are defensively against a really, really good, talented Irmo team, especially on that offensive side of the football. A, a fantastic matchup here. Two of the better teams in the state. You know, obviously they'll split up and go to, you know, Division One, 5A for Dutch, Fort Division Two for Irmo when the playoffs come along. So they both could still win state titles Which here. Uh, but two really good football teams. Irmo, big win over Chapin last week, averaging 40 on offense, 17 loud on defense. Quarterback A.J. Brand, 18 for 26, a buck 96 throwing, five touchdown passes, 11 carries, 263 on the ground. Two touchdowns rushing and a TD catch. Eight total TDs. Eclipsed the 10,000 career yard mark last week. One of our players of the week. Well-deserved, I would say, there, John. He's had an awesome career, awesome season for the Yellow Jackets. The VT commit there. Uh, A.J. Brain is also a Super 75 guy on our list. Running back Amir White has really come on strong lately. Wide receiver Donovan Murph, the kid that everybody wants. The 2025 now after the reclassification wide receiver. Had a big game last week. 11 catches, 115, two touchdowns. I think he put out his top eight or top six last week. I know Clemson and South Carolina both made the cut, so we'll see where he ends up here uh, down the line. Playmaker Malik Miller is another guy to look out for on offense. He is a weapon for them defensively, led by Jaden Bryant on the defensive line. has played really good up front for them. Darius Goodson, Ethan Gamble, Jamar Grissett, they're all playing great for that Yellow Jacket bunch here for Coach Brand. On the Dutch Fork side, you mentioned it, John. We have not talked about them a ton because they have just killed everyone. You know, they beat uh, River Bluff 41-14 to last week, averaging 42 on offense, four on defense all season. That's four on defense. They have five shutouts on the season. Most allowed is 14 points in a ball game, and that was last week to River Bluff. They're playing great on both sides of the ball. Quarterback Ethan Alfing, another player of the week of ours last week, 21 for 27, 417, four touchdowns. He's got 17 touchdowns, three picks on the season. Uh, running back Maurice Anderson, 15 carries for 66 and two yards, six catches at 108 and a touchdown as well. 
Boykin Bickley, 7 for 187 and a touchdown. Receiver K.J. Smith, 4 for 83 and two touchdowns. But defensively is where they really make their hay. Edge, Josh Smith, the linebacker, the dean, whatever you want to call him, just committed to South Carolina today. Hats off to Josh. Super excited for him. He was a coastal commit, decommitted, and now going to be a game cop. They've got Raleigh Salters at linebacker. Defensive back, one of my favorite players I think kind of gets overlooked here, Elgin Sessions, the West Virginia commit, man. He's a really, really good player on the back end of that defense. They've got two good kickers as well with Justin Welch and Alfin who punched for them. I think last week he you know, throws for 417, four touchdowns, had two punts, averaged like 45 yards a punt, man. So getting it done all over the field there for the Silver Foxes. And there's more storylines too, John. You know, these two coaches, Knotts and Brand, were assistants together at Independence, North Carolina. Oh, so they cool. coached together for a while across the state border there. What's interesting to me about this game, especially, is, is I feel like the strength of Dutch Fork is their defense. Like, offense obviously is really good, but the defense is their strength. For Irmo, their strength is the offense. I feel like I like the defense too, but the offense is what, you know, really makes him go. So when you take those two out and you flip it around to Dutch Fork's offense against Irmo's defense, I like the Sword Foxes offense a little bit better. I feel like I think that might be a key in this game. Yeah, yeah. I you totally agree with you there. You know, it's it's not the the sexy offenses that you see, but that's Dutch Fork. They just get it done. Um, you know, and I, I agree with you there. You know, Dutch Fork's been doing it for years and years and years. Um, and the thing that's just crazy to me, I agree with you 100 percent I like that Dutch Fork offense against the Arno defense a little bit better. 31 points. That's what Irma or Dutch Fork has given up all year long. 31 <laughs> points. What do you say? I mean, to say Dutch Fork can score 28 against Irmo, I think is a pretty fair assessment. Can Irmo score what everyone else combined has scored against them on Friday night? I don't know. I don't know. That just seems like a long shot. Um, again, I hope this is a very competitive game. I hope we see a Neil Byer right down on the wire, um, last possession type ball game. But I just don't know. That touch fork defense is just so doggone good. It's a game, man, where I think on the Irmo side, you know, to, to beat a team like Dutch Fork, who is this good, man, and this talented all over the field, you got to have somebody be special. And I think Irmo has the guys that can do that. You know, A.J. Brand at quarterback is one of the most dynamic players we have seen in this state in, in a long time. I mean, 10,000 career yards – doing it with his feet, with his arm, everything. Man, he's a heck of a player. And head coach Aaron Brandt, his dad, is one of the better play callers in the state as well. A great offensive mind. So he's going to have something schemed up. I know Coach Braswell for Dutch Fork on the defensive side will have something schemed up as well. So it'll be a heck of a matchup there. Another thing to look out for, I mentioned the names already. You probably get the best receiver in the state against the best DB in the state with Murph and Sessions going at each other. I don't know how many times we matched up one-on-one. But that will be fun to watch if you do get some of those. But I, I agree with you, John. I mean, I, nothing against you know nothing against Irmo at all. I think they're a very good football team. They got a really good chance to win a state title yeah. this year. Yeah. But I think that Dutch Fork defense, man, is just next level right now. I'm thinking maybe a 28 to to 17 type game, 28 to 21. I, I don't. I really don't know what to think because. When I really look at it, I'm like, man, is it is it going to be close? Is it not going to be close? It, these are two teams that it's hard to think that somebody could beat Irmo that bad, is what I'm saying. Yes. You know, because I feel like Irmo is good enough football team to play with anyone in the state. But the Dutch Fork may be at just a, another level. I, I don't know. Yeah, and I, that's the same. That's the same worry and same thoughts that I have. You know, I that Irmo defense has played very well. Um, I feel like Dutch Fork's going to find a way to score anywhere between 21 and 31 points. Mm -hmm. You know, part of me says, well, gosh, Irmo's really good. You know, yeah, maybe we see a 24-21 game. Somebody kicks a field goal as time expires. I, I could also see this game going 28-3, to three, you know, Dutch Fork's favor. That would be a statement, wouldn't it? You oh, know, my right? gosh. So, I, nothing, anywhere in between there would not surprise me. I don't think any, either team is going to score a ton of points. Uh, I don't think we're going to see the, you know, a 45-35 Tight ball game. We'd love to see it. I just don't think we've got the uh, the Jimmys and Joes on the field that are going to allow that to happen. Yeah, going to be a heck of a ball game, man, and a game that I hope 
Obviously, we'll get it again next year because they're in the region. But after, the, after the next reclass, I hope we continue to see this football game each year. It should be played every year with these guys so close you know, in proximity. It needs to be on the schedule. So looking forward to this one. I think it's the game that John and I are going to be at Friday. So if you're down at that game, come say hello. We'd love to chat with you. It's going to be a fun one to check out. Drill, what do you like here? We're both leaning Dutch Fork. Um, and like we said, Irma is such a good football team, man. It's hard not to pick them. But just the Silver Foxes, you don't make money betting against the, uh, Tom Knotts. I'll put it that way. My guys, my guys, you're going through it right now. I understand. I understand. Irmo is a fantastic football team. Yes, Irmo they are. is a state championship contender. They have a legit shot to win that Division II title. But Dutch Fork, like you guys are mentioning, they are playing so good this season. I think that's where you guys are getting hung up. If Dutch Fork does win this game by a large margin, it's not because Irmo's not great. You know, like that's yeah. what the problem yeah. is here. Um, yeah. There's a legit chance that you have two state titles in Irmo this year. So uh, I'm going with Dutch Fork, Silver Foxes. That defense is crazy. I mean, just to give up the 14 last week, it it, it didn't make any sense. Honestly, I think they did it like late in the game. They must have had some subs or some busts or something like that. They've been fantastic on defense. Your, your chance to get Dutch Fork, I think, was last year, and everybody missed that shot. So – um, I think Dutch Fork wins it by a couple scores. Irmo is a fantastic offense, a fantastic team. They're just going to have difficulty moving the football, and that's not to say that they don't have great players on that side. So I think Dutch Fork's going to win it. Should be a fun game. I know it's going to be a great environment. It's going to bring the whole city out, and you guys should have a heck of a time. Love it. What do we have from the chat on this one? Um I just I'm interested to see. So Aaron says Dutch Fork will score over 28. They probably, probably will. I mean, they've done it all year. They're averaging probably. 42, and they've got a heck of a heck of a group group of playmakers there as well. Zach says, "Yeah, don't bet against Tom Knotts." I agree with you there, Zach. Man, it is tough, tough to uh, to make a living going against that man. Chris said he's ready for Knotts to retire. <laughs> I bet most of the state <laughs> is Chris. I'll put it that way. Uh, if they want a chance to win the state, they want him out of there for sure. And I don't think he's that old. <laughs> Darren says Dutch Fork is different. They certainly are, man. Each and every year it feels like they have a absolute juggernaut there. Yeah, that's all the comments we got on this game, man. It's 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 two great teams, so it should be a lot of fun. Looking now at our fifth corner game of the week, a, a playoff game in the Skeezer are ranks, John. Because Skeezer starts their playoffs this week. And we get a rematch from two weeks ago. That's Dorchester traveling to Colin and Prep. The Raiders seven and two. Colin and Prep at eight and three. Colin and Prep won 38 to 12 two weeks back. Dorchester, another loss last week. They lost two games in a row out of Colin and Prep and then Williamsburg. Quarterback John Quadlebaum, running back John Wetzel, averaging a buck 70 a game defensively. Kusky, Schuler, and Connor. Colin and Prep, a forfeit win over Faith Christian. Kale Owens, last time these two teams played, went eight for 10, a buck 37 in touchdown. Walker Bryan, 12 for 118. Hartman Fisk at 56 pass yards, 44 rush yards, 22 receiving yards. And receiver Thomas Corbett went 5 for 157. And I mentioned that game, John, was 38 to 12 weeks ago. But it, fuck, it should have been a lot closer. When you look at the stats, both teams crossed the 400 total yard mark, and Dorchester actually have more yards at 418 to Colin and Preps 402. Can the Raiders kind of uh, avenge that loss? They're playing at home um, this week, I believe, actually. Maybe not. No, they're playing. Uh, I think they're playing at home in this game here where it they should were. Be in college. Either way, can they avenge that loss? Um, or you know, did the two losses in a row for the Raiders kind of worry you here going into the playoffs? Yeah, that that worries me. At Dorchester is a very good football team, very very good. The two losses hurt. That that shakes your confidence a bit. And then the fact that you know, just a few weeks ago, this college and prep team beat you up. Um, you know, that was a game. It was it was seventeen nothing at the half. Mm -hmm. It um, is at Dorchester. I just confirmed that. Oh, is that yep, Dorchester? Yep, yep, okay. Yep, yep. All right. Well, that will help. Um, I just think Constant Prep's a better team. You know, I, I I don't know that. You know, we said the yardage was was pretty similar. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe they turned the ball over a ton. Um, Didn't seem like. I think I saw one turnover for the Raiders, and that was it. You so. know, and with that the case, I just don't see. I don't see the rematch being much different than that first game. Um, it might be a little bit closer. But I think Carlton Prep still wins this game. Yeah, I think the Raiders, obviously, Wetzel is what makes them go. If he has a big game again, they can be anybody. But I think just Kale Owens, that group, the Colin Prep's playing great football. I think they win again at home. I think they, they uh, excuse me, win again on the road and, and move on to the playoffs. Strell, what do you like in this skeezy game here? Dorchester and Colin Prep. You know, an odd thing, you know, you, you see a rematch just this quickly, but that's what you get sometimes in some of these classes in skeezy. 
I think momentum is a big thing, obviously, in sports and especially in football. And you, you have momentum on one side and you don't on the other. So I'm going to go with Carlton Prep as well. This is a team that they've, you know, they've beaten Dorchester. I've picked Dorchester twice this year on the show, one for one with them. Um, but I got to go against them this time. Um, I think Carlton Prep is going to be able to go on the road and get this one done. Coach Nelson at Dorchester, a lot of state title experience over at Holly Hill, so he knows how to get these guys ready for the playoffs. Could be a difference maker there in this matchup. Once again, our Kona Games of the Week. We've got Sumter at Ridgeview, Gray Collegiate at North Augusta, Spartanburg at Gaffney, Irmo at Dutch Fork, and then Colin and Prep at Dorchester. This game, uh, these games are all big. Region titles on the line, and most of them a playoff game there in the other one. If you miss us talking about those games, you can check them out once the show is over back at the beginning. Uh, you go. I'll put some time stamps, stamps in there, so you go go, go to know where to listen to it. Go check it out from the beginning of the show. But Drill, let's thank some friends of the program before we look down to the five A slate and go all the way down. A single moment can ignite a passion. With every play, a spirit of teamwork is forged, and determination evolves into success. Life is the ultimate team sport, and a trusted teammate makes all the difference. Our team at Founders Federal Credit Union works hard every day to offer the financial tools you need, backed by unrivaled member service. Relax, you're with Founder. The George Agency has been serving the insurance needs of South Carolina for over 40 years. They're a full-line insurance agency concentrated in employee benefits and health insurance with an office in Mullins and Merle's Inlet, but they can help you all across the state. They have clients in Greer, Rock Hill, Columbia, and more. So wherever you are, they can help. Give Bradley, Wayne, Richard, and the crew a call or check them out online at thegeorgeagency.net. That's thegeorgeagency.net. John, let's take a look at the 5A slate and go through the, like we said, a bit of a reduced slate. You know, not everybody playing this week. This is just kind of that extra week from the hurricane there. So let's look at the 5A matchups, get some thoughts on those. We'll move down to, to 4A and so on, so forth. We also got our HTC game here coming up as well. Yeah, and 5A actually might be the busiest classification uh, Friday night from a game perspective. we got White Knoll will play at Chapin. St. James is at Conway. Woodmont will be hosting J.L. Mann. Boylan Springs on the road against Eastside. Um, Talked about Irmo going to Dutch Fort in one of our Kona games of the week. Another Kona game of the week here in the upstate. Spartanburg going to the reservation to play Gaffney. Wade Hampton will go to Riverside. Sumter is at Ridgeview. Another game of the week. <laughs> yes, a game of the week there as well. River Bluff will go to Lexington. That's a big game there for seeding purposes. I think River Bluff two and two in the region. Lexington one and three. Two teams that are very similar. They will play Smash Mouth football for sure. Should be a fun game uh, between those two. A uh, pretty big region matchup here. Hillcrest will be at TL Hannah. That's always a big game. You know, I think it's a game that we have probably seen three out of the last four years. It feels like man, always a big one. You know, those guys were. Always playing for region titles. This year, they're not exactly, you know, Teal Hannah wins. I believe that will set up a three way tie for first in that region if everything else holds serve. Uh, if Hillcrest wins, that will be a throw another wrench in the plans there for between those two. But the Rams just have, have not quite gotten it going lately. Had a tough loss to Greenwood last week, got it behind early, couldn't catch up. Teal Hannah, you know what they're going to bring to the table with that, um, whatever you're going to call it, triple option, single wing, double wing, uh, that kind of run, run heavy offense there for Coach Tom. Uh, T.L. Hannah playing good football right now. It'll be a good matchup. Yeah, it'd be a really good game there. Myrtle Beach, we got a Sockasty. Goose Creek is at Stratford. Berkeley on the road against Kane Bay. Riverside will be hosting Burns. I do want to mention, uh, so that game is not happening. That Burns Riverside is not are oh. not playing this week. Riverside is playing somebody else. Like we already said it. Burns does not play uh, oh, okay. a matchup this week. Okay. Kane Bay Berkeley is a sneaky good game. Kane Bay has had two nice wins, two kind of upsets in a row. Berkeley better better watch out. They're playing good football under Coach Lodge the last few weeks. Had the weird loss to, to Goose Creek, but it bounced back well. They're a team that I think can make some noise in the playoffs, but you can't get uh, you know slipped up here uh, by the Cobras for sure. Yeah, especially with uh, with them playing a little bit of confidence here. You'll have Spring Valley on the road against West Florence. Greenville will host Easley and Malden on the road against Greenwood. And then our hometown connection game of the week will be North Myrtle Beach. Traveling to Carolina Forest. Yes, the Chiefs at four and five taking on the Panthers at five, three, and one. Last year, Carolina Forest won this game 42 to 20. But once again, our HTC hometown connection game of the week. If North Myrtle Beach wins, it would set up a three way tie with them, Carolina Forest, and Myrtle Beach for the region title. If Carolina Forest wins, they clinch the region title. So a lot on the line here in this one. 
The Chiefs, a tough loss last week to Myrtle Beach, 21-6. to Quarterback Landon Connor did not have his best game through four picks in that loss. Receiver Caden Gore is a weapon. Drew Prince did run for a buck 90 and a touchdown. He's averaging 120 per game on the ground. Defensively led by Lamonte Smith, Will McNeely, and Tanner Patilla. Carolina Forrest blanked Conway 42 to nothing. Jaron Fox has uh, been a former player of the week. He's had a huge season on the ground. They ran for 300 plus as a team last week. Man, they're getting it done for Coach Morris. Quarterback Patrick Mullen, receiver Nicholas Zinconi. You know, that offense I mentioned for Coach Morris is the same every year. They want to spread you out. They want to go no huddle, hurry up, and they want to run the ball. Uh, so, really fun to watch what he does there. Defensively led by Charles McCray, a defense that held Conway to 137 of total offense last week. Can the Chiefs kind of overcome some of the, the sloppy play last week for Coach Hill? Can they get it back and play good football and, and, and you know, win this game on the road, set up a tie? Or is Carolina Forest just rolling in too much power firepower right now? I think Northern Myrtle Beach will certainly play better this mm -hmm. week than they did last week. I don't think they're going to throw four interceptions. <laughs> you would hope not. Two weeks in a row. I think this will be a really close ball game. But I think Carolina Forest is just a little bit better. Um, I, I like the Panthers to win this game. But I think it's going to be a pretty close game. Um, I know Mer North Myrtle Beach wishes they could get last week back and, and get another shot at the Seahawks. But um, I think this will be a close competitive game. North Myrtle Beach, good program this year. I think Carolina Forest got a little bit of an edge. And you mentioned that loss for the Chiefs. 21-6, to six, four of those picks, two of them were pick sixes. So that was really what decided the game yeah. um, last week between those two. So they cleaned that up and they got a real chance here. Yeah. you know. Yeah. But they have struggled to stop the run a little bit. And with Fox and Morris there for the Panthers, they want to run it, and that is not a team you want to struggle to stop the run against. I think Carolina yeah. Forest too much firepower. I think they win this game, a team that is really surging here in region play. I think the Panthers win this one in our HTC Hometown Connection game. Jarrell, what do you think about this one uh, down there in the Horry County area? I thank our friends for HTC for putting a spotlight on this game this week, but um, I don't think it's going to be close. Uh, Carolina Forest, give me that, that rushing attack. Shout out to Jaron Fox, man. He he went crazy a couple weeks ago, one of our players of the week. Uh, but I think Carolina Forest is peaking at the right time. You see how they dismantled, you know, that North Myrtle, or that, excuse me, that Myrtle Beach defense a couple weeks ago. Um, I know North Myrtle Beach is tough on that side, but I don't think they're going to be able to keep up in this one because they won't be able to score enough. So give me Carolina Forest in this one. Yeah, HTC, this is Life Connect with it. Once again, our HTC Hometown Connection game. Each week we'll have a game from the Ori, Georgetown, or Marion County areas. If you're in those areas, check them out for all your needs. They do a great job um, on the on the internet side there for you guys. Once again, our HTC, HTC Hometown Connection game, North Myrtle Beach at Carolina Forest. Any other comments from the chat on 5A, Jarrell, or should we move on down to the 4A ranks? Let's jump down to 4A. Yeah, so uh... – a lot of football or a lot of days of football here for four. We've got a game tomorrow night. Aiken will be hosting Gilbert. I do want to say uh, we did some research in the car ride on Friday. And Jarrell Aiken has a 24 loss? games. 24, 24 games. Game. I believe longest in the, in the state right now. It's got to be up there. I don't know if they're getting over it this week. Uh, we'll put it that so. way. I don't think so. I, I think they're going to have to wait until next year to, to crack that one. Um, now their friends, South Aiken, they'll play Thursday night. They'll play host to airport. And then on Friday night, we've got a handful of games here. Number one team in the state for a West side will be hosting South side, man. That offense is impressive. Uh, and we, we turned on that Ren game last Friday while we were at the, uh, the salute of baseball, Leesville game right for half. We're like, Oh, we'll check the score. It's like 35 to 21 late the first half. Like, this is a you know full game's worth of points right here, man. They can light it up. They did have some problems defensively stopping Ren. Ren put up some points there, but that offense with Woods and Bomar and Weaver and Richardson, Evans, I mean, just name, name, name. They're too good right now offensively. They, are, they are, can just outscore everyone, it feels like. Yeah, they'll be fun to watch in the playoffs as mm -hmm. well. Bluffton will be hosting Hilton Head Island. A, a big region matchup there. This region has been clinched by Bishop England, I guess, due to the tiebreaker. But currently, we have three teams with one loss, including both of these two teams here. So the winner of that will get the second seed. Loser will get the third seed. But obviously, 4A going to that RPI. So we'll see how that shakes out. But certainly a big uh, big playoff seeding game there. Yes, for sure. Blue Ridge will go to Pendleton. Greer at home against Traveler's Rest. Berea is on the road against Pickens. A three-win Berea team this year. They're improving. They are. Getting they are. Great job by Coach, uh, Coach Chisholm there. Yeah. One of our Kona games of the week, North Augusta hosting Gray. Wren will be at Emerald. Lawrence hosting Fountain Inn. And Daniel 
on the road against Seneca in that rivalry game there, a game that was supposed to be played week seven. Now we get a rivalry game here, um, final week of the regular season. And Seneca is a bit of a, a, a mystery, it feels like, John, because, you know, you look at it, they're sitting there at eight and one. You're like, are these guys really good? Are they not really good? I don't know. I feel like they haven't played the toughest schedule. I think Daniel is clearly the better team. I think the Lions win this game handily. They can probably name their score with Grayson Cleary and, and that crew, what they're doing offensively. They're playing great football. But I should just see, you know, how – what Seneca can do. They keep it competitive. I don't know what they've got. We'd love to see what the Bobcats have. You know, if they're a team that we should look out for in the playoffs or not, I just really don't know. Travis says Daniel by 14. I was thinking maybe 20, 21, maybe more. I don't know. That Daniel team is playing so good right now, Travis. It's hard to pick against them, man. They are, they are rolling – and Seneca, like I said, just has not been tested. It feels like this season, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're 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 a good team, but they're not they're not as good as what their record indicates because of their schedule. Um, I, I, Chris is more forty. Yeah, more I would correct. probably say between those two numbers, maybe. Yeah. I, I'm thinking probably like a thirty, <laughs> maybe a thirty point win. You know, I'm seeing like a forty, like a forty two seven, forty two fourteen kind of game. I don't think it's very competitive. Um, I would like a court to be. We'll love for it to be more. Uh, love for it to be closer. Love to see both sides have a good time. But I, I think Daniel is going to have uh, most fun in this one. Any comments on four A drill from you or from the chat? Uh, no more chat comments. I'm I'm getting slow on comments here, so we'll see what if, if something filters through. I'll post it. Looking at the three A ranks now, John. Yeah, just a handful of games here in three A. All these games will be on Friday. St. Joseph's will be hosting Christ Church. Fun rivalry there and a big game for the region as well. I believe the winner of that will get the two seed. Uh, loser will get the three seed there. Christ Church seems to be playing a little better. Had a nice win over Southside Christian last week. St. Joe's fell to Powdersville, giving the Patriots that region title. I think both teams are teams you may have to look out for in 3A Upper State playoffs. They can both win a game or two, it feels like. That's a big game for to see who gets a home game uh, in that first round, at least. Yeah, you know, uh, BHP and Mountain View get – Get a lot of the press for 3A Upper State. But these teams cannot be overlooked uh, when we come playoff time. Upper State 3A playoffs could be pretty pretty fun. Um, these two teams should be a really good game Friday night as well. Wahala will be hosting Crescent. Carolina goes to Palmetto. And Powdersville is hosting Southside Christian. Union hosting Mountain View. Broom on the road against Woodruff. Pendleton hosting Blue Ridge. And Silver Bluff will play host to Newberry. Quick on um, Pendleton Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge got a running back. KB Henderson has a huge season so far. You can check him out if you have not uh, see what he's doing there. He's doing a great job for that uh, squad. And then Newberry, Silver Bluff. Uh, that's a, t a game that if you'd have told me three weeks ago for the region title, I'd have said no way. Silver Bluff hadn't won a game. Yeah. But all of a sudden now, they are in the mix. They're two and one. Uh, they've, they've won a couple games now to get a two and seven. Newberry. 3-0 and in the region. Like I said, the winner wins the region here. Um, a, a Newberry team that has made the move now to Caldwell full-time at quarterback. has played really well in electric play playmaker for them. It's allowed Satterwhite to really focus on that linebacker spot on defense. They got Jamel Howells, of, of course, as the, the Carolina commit is a big weapon for him out wide. But, you know, Silver Bluff, I mean, they're always tough this time of year. They got some big kids, some physical kids. They're getting better, obviously. I think it started out 0-6 and have won two in a row, I believe it was. Uh, or excuse me, 0-7 and, and won two in a row, I think, for Silver Bluff there. So you're certainly getting better. But I still think Newberry, Coach Jeter, and the boys, I think they get a, a win here. Um, I think they're playing really good football and peaking, hopefully, at the right time. Yeah, I think so. And th this has turned into a really fun region for playoff time. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you talk about Keenan and Swansea, who both have pretty good years, too. Uh, playoffs can be tough. Somebody's going to be hosting those teams, and that's a that's a tough tough first round game for somebody. Yeah, and I'll say this: I don't want to get too much into it. We'll do it next week on our playoff preview. But I was doing a, a quick uh, a quick look at some of the playoff brackets, uh, John, and I believe what I saw today has a second round matchup between the Dillon Wildcats and the Newberry Bulldogs, and that will be some musty television. Uh, yeah, that will be fun. a really fun game if we get that here in a couple of weeks. But obviously, a lot still to be settled yeah. for you to that point. Um, anything else, Trail on 3A, or do we have more games in 3A? That is it. Um, Chris had MVP by 90. Derek's Derek powders are looking well. They're six Legion games in champs. a row. They've won, man. They're playing great, uh, getting it done. Uh, in the, you know what I like about Powdersville, too, is for the last couple of years, um, John and Drell, they've been kind of snake bit, it felt like. You know, they, yeah. they have not won the close games really when they needed to. 
you know, that if something goes against them late and they have a, a two-point conversion, they don't convert or a big turnover or whatever. But lately, they've won some close games. That game last week was a one-score game, could have easily gone the other way. They are finding ways to get it done and kind of flip that narrative. I like what Patterson was doing. Coach Muster has those guys playing really good football. Yeah, and a great time, too. You're about to trigger the Daniel Fate um, fan base by saying that powdersville has been snake bit. <laughs> they had the last two years that they used all their good Except juju. They game. used all their good juju three years ago uh, to win that. Yeah, Zach, exactly right. Woodruff, Upper State 3A playoffs, too, is going to be a heck of a team to watch. A, a tough out for anyone, no doubt about it. I believe Newberry will be in. Uh, yes, back. Newberry three goes to lower state. Uh, very interesting to see how that region flips down because you, you think of Newberry as more of an upper state team. Uh, but, yeah, they will be flipping down to lower state this uh, playoff season for these next two like, next two classifications. Chris, has you explain the RPI? Well, um, a lot goes into it. Only 4A and 5A are using it. Nobody else is. And I believe it's based off of your win, win-loss win record, your opponent's win-loss record, and also the win-loss record of their opponents as well. There's a lot of pieces that go into it. Uh, the official one, I think, is not actually the max preps one. There's one, I think, on the athletic director site that is the official, official one. Uh, but they're just u- using it in 4A and f- 5A this year. And basically, instead of saying, you know, predetermined brackets where Region 1 is going to play Region 3 and, and vice versa, this will basically just say the one team is going to play the 16 team or whatever it's going to be. So just we're not going to have preset brackets. It's going to be all dependent on that RPI and how it turns out. So a lot of different, piece, a lot of different pieces go into it. Uh, but let me sure to see how that shakes out. I don't know if I like it or not yet. Uh, hard to say, uh, but that's kind of how they're going to use it. Chris, if you're familiar with college baseball or college basketball, very similar type situation where they're going to use a, a mathematical formula to determine seeding. So something like that. How they account for different classifications in that? I have no idea. Yeah, I, I, I just – great great question. If great question. Great Maybe question. They don't. <laughs> Seems and, like – and Nathan, I was just looking out for you. Kevin said Ooh. it. I did not. I, I just said the last couple of years. I didn't say three it's years ago. Expensive <laughs> lunch. I didn't say three years ago. Um, but yeah, Strail, let's uh, shout out some friends of the program if we look down to the two way slate next. At HTC, we're here to keep you connected, here to provide reliable fiber optic internet with free, fast, and secure HTC smart Wi Fi. HTC, here to connect. With three convenient locations in Spartanburg, Duncan, and Greenville, Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates, Kona, offers the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, and pain management in the upstate. Go to... Looking for top-notch sports gear and uniforms? Look no further than First Team Sports. With 30 years of serving the Carolinas, First Team Sports is your local, full-service dealer. From youth teams to colleges, we've got you covered with team uniforms, staff apparel, letterman jackets, sports equipment, and facility branding. Visit our local store in Greenville or firstteamsc.com. Make First Team your first choice. And now the two-A slate, John. Uh, uh, at least a couple really big games in this one. Oh, it's a smaller slate. Still got some big ones here on uh, week 11. Yeah, we'll have Mid Carolina hosting Fairfield Central. Saluda at home against American Leadership. The Tigers need a bounce back in the worst way. That was a, a butt whooping last week. And they should get it Friday. Um, got some things they need to work out. Friday would be a good time to do that. Clinton will go to Liberty for a, uh, a pretty Region title ball game right there. A region title on line there. You know, Liberty's a team that I feel like has gotten better and better the last couple of yeah. years like that. You know, they're a team we started doing this, John, that nobody really talked about ever. They've been, you know, six, seven wins, it feels like, the last few years. They've done a really – I think that coach won his 100th game this season. He's done a great job there. They're getting better and better. Clinton, though, is just a monster. You know, they lost the two early games to, uh, to Woodruff and Daniel. No shame in either one of those. Had an off week last week in week 10, but I think they are poised for a deep run. You know, that offense is tough to prepare for all. You know, first off, because you don't see it a whole lot. They got some big boys up front. The defense is flying around. I think Clinton rolls in this game on the road. I think it might be somewhat close. I don't think it's an absolute blowout from the get-go. Um, I think Liberty will will keep this somewhat, somewhat competitive, but Clinton, definitely the better team in this matchup, should certainly win. Um, and then our final game, in 2A, Big Bad, Batesburg, Leesville will travel down and play Strom Thurman. Um, on paper, this looks like trouble for the Rebels, but you still got to still gotta play the game. Another one of these where if the Panthers win, they're region champs. If the Rebels win, we get a three-way tie, and you bring out all the tiebreakers between those guys in Saluda and Batesburg, Leesville. You know, and 
I, I don't know what to make of the Strom Thurmond team now. Um, they're kind of hard to, to figure out because I felt like going into that Saluda game, I believe we were all really high on Strom. I think we may have all picked Strom Thurmond, especially at the Peach Fields at home there. And then they go 35 to a Saluda team that we saw last week. And I don't know how they scored 35 against Strom Thurmond. Uh, that offense last week was, was not good. Um, they had nothing for Batesburg Leesville. The Panthers were so impressive, man. His big boys up front. Amadre Wooden in the backfield is a monster. Quarterback Tanner Watkins is, is now the all-time pass touchdown leader or maybe just career touchdown leader for, for the Panthers. You got Katie Witt, Jamarius Clark outside, some really good playmakers. Guys on defense as well, John Sawyer. Witt playing both ways. You got Clarence Springs there. I think he had a pick as well. Man, Coach Lawson's bunch is playing great football. Strom Thurmond, uh, that loss to Saluda just just really scares me. You know, I, I know I saw him lose to North Augusta earlier on in the year, playing a bigger team. Okay, they kept it close. I wasn't super worried about it. But I'm worried about the offense this week and also worried about the defense. I'm worried about Strom Thurmond on both sides of the ball. I'll put it that way. Um, Make sure Leesville is playing great football. But you're going to the Peach Fields, not an easy place to win. And it would make total sense for this region for the Rebels to win. It, it, it would. It would. But I think the Panthers are a better football team. I think they win this game. Yeah, and I, I was going into last week thinking, okay, Batesburg Louisville is going to beat Saluda, and then Strom Thurmond is going to beat them. We're going to have chaos. After seeing Batesburg Louisville Friday, uh, I, I just don't see how Strom Thurmond, not Strom Thurmond, I don't see how a team that lost to Saluda by ten is going to beat Batesburg Louisville. Uh, Batesburg Louisville dominated that game. It, it didn't was, even play their best game, it didn't feel like. Yeah, I mean, it was 28-7, to seven, and that seems like, oh, it wasn't that yeah. bad. They just dominated. Yeah, had a couple turnovers early on yeah. as well, man. It could have gotten worse than that, it felt like. But uh, like said, that bunch for Coach Lawson is playing really, really good football. I mean, Upper State 2A playoffs as a whole are going to be awesome to watch. I think we're both leaning Batesburg-Leesville. I think Wooden and just the, the option of Witt or Clark, two playmakers outside, a little bit too much for the Rebels, even though they got their own playmakers. They started to play a little bit better offensively. I don't know if it's enough uh, against that Panthers team. Yeah, and that defense is really good too. Uh, yeah, like Batesburg league Leesville in this game. Perfect. Any other comments on two A Jarrell? Or uh, from you? Pop in here. You saw that. No, that's play last it, week? man. Got a lot of score predictions. A lot of the chat believes that uh, Batesburg's going to win this game pretty handily. So, um, other than Cam's upset pick, and I think we had another Bait, uh, Strom Thurmond fan in here. Uh, but yeah. I, Baseball leagues will just look tough. I don't see how how Strom Thurmond can can keep up with them. Just they just manhandle Saluda. That game was yeah. was not even close. So should be a lot of fun. And then Baseburg leagues, but a lot of the players came up to me after the game. It was a lot of fun. They were giving me a little, you know, giving me a hard time as they should have because on air I picked Saluda to win the game. Um, but I'm picking the rest of the season. So you guys got to perform. Profession. The pressure is on you now, guys. <laughs> I love it. We did also get some flack for some, somebody did a, uh, a preseason uh, projections for the team and had them at five and seven. That was not us. We did not do that. We, we knew baseball was going to be good this year. I think we uh, said on the preview show this season. Not sure where that came from. Um, so we didn't do that part. But uh, yeah, I love talking to those folks down there um, uh, as a salute again. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, Chester Strong Thurman could be an interesting matchup. Be Chester has been a tough team to figure out, Marcel. I don't know if they're good, bad, injured, healthy. It, it's hard to say about the Cyclones there, but. That'd be a tough game. Right Let's there. look down now at the 1A slate, John. Uh, probably not a big slate in 1A either this week. Yeah, just a handful of games here, too. Allendale Fairfax will be hosting Ridgeland. Ware Shoals on the road against Whitmire. Dixie will be hosting Williston Elko. Abbeville going on the road to McCormick. And then Rich Spring Mineta hosting Blackville Hilda. That could be a good ball game there um, in 1A to wrap it up. Yeah, RSM has been solid. They got four wins this year. Blackfield Hilda, a nice bounce back last week after the loss to HKT a couple weeks back. Um, I, I just think uh, Blackfield Hilda, maybe that's kind of the wake-up call they needed. We'll see here yeah. as they get ready for the playoff runs. Najee, good to see you, man. HKT are. is a heck of a football team. They're certainly in our top five. Um, they have played some great football here the last uh, couple weeks. Decay, love Decay, man. I appreciate you, Najee. Uh, you boys are playing good football, man. Enjoy watching the Trojans here lately and can't wait to see what you do uh, once the, the playoffs roll around. Jarrell, any other comments on 1A? Uh, anything else popping in before we look down at the Skiza ranks? I know it's a, a smaller slate here in 1A and 2A, so not a whole lot to talk about, but anything else that popped in there? 
Marshall says decay. I love it. Um, uh, let me see. JD's asking me about hot dog updates. I mean, it's still Hartsville number one all time. You know, obviously, uh, PD slid in there. This season rankings, I'll just have to look through it. I'll, I'll probably do a, a postseason hot dog ranking for you once I I'll go say this the season. Um, the, for me, number one is PD. PD was really good two weeks ago. Wren yes. was very good, I felt like, as well. Uh, that was a good hot dog earlier on in the season. I'm not sure I have to think about after that. But good, those, good, those good, good one at Clinton. Had a good one at Clinton. I remember that one. Yep. Yep. That was yep, very yep. solid. So we'll, 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 do a, we'll do a rankings there. My, and, uh, my people chicken are picking, bog at Lors has been my favorite so far. And then everybody's picking Abbeville to win 1A already. We're not even to the playoffs yet. <laughs> man, they're playing great, man. They it's are Abbeville. playing great football. Looking now at the Skiza Slate. And guys, Skiza playoffs start this week as well. So these are win or go home type matchups. You got Florence Christian at Hilton Head Christian. Trinity at Pinewood Prep, Orangeburg Prep at Bethesda, H uh, Hilton Head Prep at ha uh, Calhoun, Cardinal Newman at Hammond, Spartanburg Christian at PD. The Golden Eagles start their run to a state title this week. I think they are playing good football. Lawrence Bennett at Northwood, First Baptist Northside Christian, Ben Lippin at Augusta Christian. These teams played last week. Augusta Christian won, and now they match up again. I think this time we flip it. I think Ben, ben Lippin with KJ Dupree and Brandon Mary get a win in this matchup. Newberry, Richard Wynn, Patrick Henry at Williamsburg, St. John's at Greenwood Christian, our game of the week, Colin and Prep at Dorchester, Wardlaw at Holly Hill, a really good eight-man game here. Wardlaw's got two losses, both to Richard Wynn, Holly Hill two losses, both to JDA. So these are probably, I would say, honestly, the third and fourth best team in eight-man football. They matched up here in the first round. Should be a fun game there. We got Lee traveling to, traveling to Thomas Hayward, Heathwood Hall at Porter Goud, John Paul at Wilson Hall, Carolina at Beaufort, King at JDA, Cross at Lawrence, Hilton Head Prep at Calhoun. I said that never about that. And then Kings at JDA as well. Um, any other comments, Drell, before we shout out some friends of the program? We do not. That's cool. Ready to find your home field advantage? At Founders Federal Credit Union, we offer competitive rates to tackle buying a dream home with ease. Our team will coach you through every step. Plus, we never charge private mortgage insurance. Don't fumble your chance at home ownership. Start your journey with Founders. Visit foundersfcu.com slash mortgage today. Terms and conditions apply. Member qualification required. Equal housing lender. Institution and MLS. Identifier number 41064. Our Pick'em Contest, presented by Hannah Engineering. We've got one more week, John. Uh, week 11 is coming up. we got a, a, a tight race here. But let's look first at the Week 10 results. Lots of high scores. Uh, 11 spot from Michael. Lots of 10s. Peyton, Jaron, David, Coach T, Big O. Bunch of 9s. Brad, Bradley, Cam, Chris, Dale, DJ, Jamie, Jeffrey, Quentin, Ryan, Tank, Corey, and Tyler. Jarrell led us with a 10, John with a 9, me with an 8. Like I said, a bunch of big scores last week. Hats off to Michael. Though. Anytime you get a perfect score, it's still very impressive. First week he's been in the pick'em. So, well done, Michael. <laughs> he should have kept doing it. He's, uh, he should have he been in all season. Get ready, though. If you it, Guys, don't forget, we do a playoff pick'em as well. We will start that next week. So, that will reset everything. Join that. It's a lot of fun. Also, like I mentioned, we'll have our champion announced next week on the show. Uh, let's look at the overall standings now as we go into week 11. Charlie L with a 74 spot. Two people with two back, Jeffrey and Ben. Pat, three back, and a bunch of 70s. Big O, Corey, Daryl, Jay, Ryan, and Richard. John, you lead us. You lead everybody. 76, a big number there. Jarrell with 70 and myself with 69. Be a real shame if John and Jarrell just forgot to pick this week and I passed them both. That would be a shame. <laughs> I, probably would, I probably would skip next week's show and be ill. Would be a, a real shame. But um, the tiebreaker we've decided, if there is a tie for first place, it's going to be the most points in week 11. If that's a tie, we'll go back to week 10, week 9, vice versa, until we have a tiebreaker there. So good luck to everyone. I would say the folks, more than three backs going to be tough. Um, if you're two back, you got a chance, I feel like. You got a chance. Three, four back is going to be iffy. Uh, so we'll see how it shakes I mean, out. If you, if you come out and you put up an 11 spot next week, um, you can't really give yourself a chance then. And with a limited slate, 
could happen. Yeah. It could happen this yeah. week. So definitely tune in for that. Like I said, we'll release the winner next week. Have our playoff pick them go live next week as well. So definitely join for that. And now for our polls, we'll have this week's poll, have a poll next show. It will be done until the season is over. So let's start with the 5A poll, John and Jarrell. A little bit of movement this week. Not a whole lot, though. In, in Division One. Dutch Fork stays at 1, Sumter at 2. I believe they were 2 last week. Is that correct, or did they move up a spot? Um, Sumter moved sure. up. Sumter goes up a spot. Sumterville at 3. Spartanburg at 4. JL Man at 5. On Division Two, Northwestern still at 1st. Irmo second, Gaffney three, Greenwood four, big win over Hillcrest, and T.L. Hanna at the five spot there. So you get a, a one-two matchup with Dutch Fork and, excuse me, Irmo, and then a four, was it four-three matchup with Spartanburg and Gaffney this week as well. So lots of big-time ones there in 5A. Uh, a similar issue uh, we've been had all year long, guys. I feel like is that, that five spot in both polls, the four spot's kind of tough too at some points, yeah. uh, but – uh, that back end was tough, but I think we got a good a good list here in week ten. Yeah, and it, it's tough when you got you know under thirty schools to pick from on on both the divisions. Perfect. And down in four A, West Side stays number one. <laughs> we got a lock jam in four A. This mess. <laughs> we got West Side at one, South Point two, Daniel three, Hartsville clearly in at four, and then a three way tie at fifth. Great Collegiate North Augusta South Lawrence. Well. Great collegiate North Augusta. They will settle it themselves yeah, yeah. there uh, this week. So, interesting to see that uh, matchup. But 4A is, is, is fun. This week, I guess we could have gone six or seven deep here in 4A. Well, <laughs> we five, got five, we five did. We went seven deep. We're, we're ready here in 4A. <laughs> uh, and then down to the 3A ranks, BHP stays one. Mountain View two. Loris three. Woodruff four. Dillon and Oceanside tie for fifth. I'll say it, 3A is tough for me because I feel like it's – I don't know if it's, I would say, deep because I'm not sure how good these teams are. But I think there's a lot of teams that are very similar, um, you know, in, in talent-wise. Like a team like Oceanside Collegiate, I had them really high in my poll. I um, mean, I think they're a team that is just – they played a tough non-region. Yeah. You know, got smoked by a couple big boys. But have then done the smoking once they got into region play. Uh, a team like Woodruff, you know, they got a nice win over over Clinton. Played MVP tough. Besides that, what do we got? I don't know. MVP, they beat Woodruff. They beat Asheville School. Besides that, what do we got? I don't know. BHP got smashed by Westside. by Westside. After that, how good are they? I, I don't know. It's just three A's is a. I want to say I don't know if you guys saw what Reese Davis said about the Big Twelve this year. He said it's not the deepest conference; it's the widest, and that's kind of how I feel about here in three A. Like. I don't think there's a bunch of like every year, like this 3A group here compared to last year's 3A group. I would take Daniel and Camden over every one of these teams. That Daniel and Cam the Tanner team we saw last year. I don't know if these guys are to that level from what we saw, but I think they're all very kind of competitive, kind of in that same realm, uh, a step back maybe from that. If that makes sense, maybe rambling. I don't know. Yeah. And I, I think, I think there's some really good teams in, in 3A. I'm just not sure, you know. If Loris and Belton Honey Path play, how would that matchup go? Um, you know, Woodruff and Loris, Woodruff and Dylan. How would that go? I don't know. I don't know. I think they're all pretty good. Um, I don't know. It's gonna be fun. That's why we're gonna have the playoffs, and it's gonna be really, really exciting. And um, you know, I'm gonna have to carry a coin around to flip it to see who I pick. Yeah, yeah, Drill. What are your thoughts on 4A and 3A as well? Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I like the way you put that. It's not necessarily the deepest, but it's the widest. I think 3A is going to be extremely competitive. Um, I think that we're starting to see a little separation now. Hartsville's kind of closed that gap. They came out of nowhere with that huge win over South. Very Florida. impressive. Very um, impressive win. So I, I feel like West Side, South Point, and Daniel have kind of just led the pack all year. But then when you look at it, it just shows our indecision on who we think is that fifth team. I mean, we really don't know. Again, we get to see that competition between Gray and North Augusta. That's going to be fantastic. What is South Florence after getting you know beat by, what, 19? Um, to a very good Hartsville team. So I'm not really sure, but I think those three in 4A kind of separated. I think that's the the cream of the crop. And then uh, in 3A, I think it's just uh, any it could go any way. And it, it's it's a very, very wide net. So I'm excited to see how it shakes off. It's I think it's going to be the most competitive playoff. So I'm really looking forward to it. 
Yeah, three is yeah. a lot of fun. And looking down now at two A and one A, the two A ranks, Batesburg Leesville stays number one. They have been super impressive. Clinton made a big jump this week on a week off. I think hey. they, I think we had them at five they last week. Five last week. Two yeah. now, big jump for the Red Devils. Barnwell stays hot right there. Phil Central stays there as well. Another three way tie for fifth. <laughs> Sherall, Manny, Phillips Simmons, three teams that I think are all very good. Um, but I think we just don't know how good they are. You know, Manning, Manning's eight and one. I think, yeah. and just we haven't talked about about them a whole lot. Philip Simmons similar, Sherall similar. Got beat up early playing the football. Now, we'll be interesting to see the lower state two A playoffs, especially. I mean, both sides be great in two A. I feel like, but interesting there. And then in one A, Abbeville stays number one. Louisville still two. Bamberg Earhart number three. HKT four. Lakeview five. Cross getting a vote as well. Two more tough ones uh, for me there, guys. Uh, a lot of indecision on that five spot in in. 1A, excuse me, in 2A. And then 1A, I kind of worried three through five, really what I wanted to do. I wasn't yeah, really yeah. sure how I felt about mixing and matching those boys behind Abbeville and Louisville. Yeah, yeah. And this, again, I think 2A is going to be an incredible playoffs to watch. Yes. And I think 1A as well. Um, you know, I think we're – all three of us are obviously looking at the poll. We feel very strongly about who's number one in both of those. But after that, you know – Man, roll some dice because I think there's a lot of teams that could um, stake a claim to to be in that two spot. And hey, if you're two, you got to crack at number one. Um, so it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I will say a lot of our polls are very similar. I know it doesn't look like it this week, uh, <laughs> but the one that has been consistently different is two way all year. I feel like we've all had different teams in different areas uh, because I think. We think, we think there's a lot of good teams. We just don't yeah. know how good, and we all have a different opinion of how good they are. I think Saluda kind of blew this week up, and I think Clinton benefited the most by that, you know, because you had Saluda and kind of Thurman drop out the last couple of weeks. So that's why it kind of looks the way it does now in two-way. But uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, actually compiling those this week because it shows the indecision and, you know, how good a lot of these teams are. For sure. I want to shout out our teams of the week. The Hartsville Red Foxes, that big win over South Florence. Talked to them, you know, earlier in the show, man. Super impressive. What they did offensively, putting up, uh, you know, I think it was 50 plus. Obviously, they had a kick return from Demarion Co., a pick six from Demarion Co. I mean, that kid is electric. I, you know, yeah. I sent you guys the highlights, I think, for the pick six and the kick return. Just nuts what he's doing there uh, on that side of the ball. I think he's a James Madison commit. He could play for my team any day of the week, man. He is a heck of a player there for the Red Foxes. Also, Louisville, the Lions just hammered Lamar, held him to 78 yards, ain't no offensive touchdowns there. A Lamar team that was scorching hot. Louisville playing great football right now for Coach Usher. And then Greenwood, the big win over Hillcrest, jumped out to an early lead, had a real chance to, to you know, tie for first in that region. Not sure how the tiebreaker is going to work out, but they'll be right there uh, getting a good seed in the playoffs. Our teams of the week brought to you by Preferred Home Services. Then our players, I mentioned, mentioned a couple guys earlier, A.J. Brandon, Irmo, eight touchdowns. Ethan Alfing, Dutch Fork, 400 plus yards. Grayson Clary at Daniel, more TDs and incompletions last week. I think five to four. And then Aiden Manavi at Oceanside, 360 plus, six touchdowns. Got an offer from Georgia Southern today. Love to see that for Aiden. Nice. He has had a great season. Our players of the week brought to you by the Georgia Agency. As always, guys, send us those stats each and every week on email, on social media, whatever you want to do. Even if we don't pick them to win, we're going to say them on the recap show, and we're going to put them in our blog that comes out. So send us those stats. We'll pick our winners, and we'll put those guys. going to give them some shine however we can. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, slash X, Instagram, YouTube, and more at Moving Chains, M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S. Our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, Google, and more. Our website, movingchains.com. We do a live preview show about 7.15 on Tuesdays on Facebook and YouTube. We'll have round one pre uh, playoff preview show next Tuesday. Tune in for that. We'll have our recap show come out on Sunday. We've got a, a great inter interview with Coach Chris Carter from Archer Wilkinson coming out probably Thursday. He was ready to talk to you. Just a sneak peek, John. He coached Mike Williams at Lake Marion cool. and played with Terrell Owens at uh, UT Chattanooga. No so a really cool guy to talk to. That'll come out probably Thursday. The Bruins are finishing second in their region, poised for a, a big playoff run there. So tune in to all of our socials all week long for lots of really good stuff. Um, Drell, John, any final thoughts as we wrap up the last week of the regular, regular season? Hard to believe it's here, man. I thought the season has flown by. But even with a reduced slate, a lot of big games. 
Before we do that, I got a couple skis of questions I'm going to post up there for you. Yes, do that. Mitchell, fault on J.D. versus Holly Hill. A 12 to nothing game, a game that you typically do not see a scoreline like that in eight-man football. Uh, J.D.A. has now beat Holly Hill twice on the season. The defense played lights out, shutting out a very good Holly Hill team, you know, with Souls there and Harmon and, and Gillum. That is a great win for JDA. You know what they're doing there uh, for, with Colson Lodeholt. Boys, they're playing awesome football. Uh, Nazir Void as well. Love what JDA is doing. I think they're poised for a state title run. Chris asked about Spartanburg Christian, a team that is – they're kind of tough to judge because they play a lot of public schools up here because there's not a lot of ski schools around them. Um, so t- it's kind of taking on the chance sometimes. They run a single wing offense, tough to prepare for, but I don't think they have the athletes to match up with PD. I think PD is, is a, the better team in this matchup. A long drive for Spartanburg, too, down to Mullins to get to that one. Um, so I, I think the Golden Eagles win that game pretty handily. But Spartanburg Christian, though, with that offense, can be tough to prepare for. I still like PD to win that one. Time anything for final thoughts. Else? That was it. Yeah, final thoughts for you. You got anything for us, Drill? Um, I'm going to echo Chris. Um, Y'all are killing me with these polls, man. Um, if you've seen the meme of Ben Affleck smoking the cigarette, that was me when I saw them rolling through my email this week, uh, trying to figure out how it's going to fit all these teams on the graphics. So uh, it's a lot of fun. But uh, no, it's it's exciting. We get an extra week of football, so I'm excited about that as we prepare for the playoffs. It's going to be interesting to see as we do our playoff preview. How are these teams going to adjust that did not get to play this week, especially in the lower part of the state? Were they able to use their time wisely uh, and be effective? Were they able to get healthy? Uh, Will they have the advantage or will it be a disadvantage? It's going to be fun to monitor that as we go through the week one playoff slate. Like I mentioned earlier, John and I should be at Dutch Fork Irmo on Friday. If you're there, say hello. Love to see you. I know with the Irmo game earlier in the year, I got to meet uh, Jesse Bryant, a couple of their folks. So certainly – Say hey to us. Love to see you. Love to chat and talk some ball with you. Be a lot of fun. I want to shout out some friends from uh, Baseburg, Leesville, and Strong Thurman last week. You know, Chris Smith and, and Quentin we got to meet. Coach Lawson, Coach Young, obviously. Um, lots of other great folks there. Uh, I believe Primo James was there for Saluda. Got to see him. Um, who else we saw? Coach Campbell. Great talking to him. Our buddy Cam and Curtis. Uh, a ton Chris of other – yeah, Chris Smith. ton of other video and photo guys we got to meet and, uh, doing, doing it with the Purpose Podcast. Talk to those guys, big baseball Leesville guys there as well. Enjoyed seeing them. So if you're at the game this week, come say hello to us. Love to talk to you guys and, and talk some ball. But final thoughts from you, John, here on week 11. Yeah, um, I just want to echo that incredible atmosphere again at Saluda uh, last Friday. And I tell you what, I'm, I'm glad. I'm kind of glad I'm not a player this week, and I'm really glad I'm not a coach because – as cool as this week is, and it's big games we got, I'd be lying to you. I'm looking forward to the end of the games Friday and seeing the brackets come out. I would be looking so far ahead of whatever game I would be coaching or playing in this week to be looking ahead to, to see how the playoffs are going to match up. And then, um, you know, I'll probably be up all night Friday night playing around with the brackets and looking through uh, possible matchups there. Yeah, going to be a great week, man. Looking forward to seeing those come out and seeing, you know, typically rail one's a little bit slow. Um, this this year, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. But it should be a lot of fun. Tune in next Tuesday for our preview show. Break that down, um, uh, all the round one matchups, and also probably get some state title predictions, et cetera, on that. will be a, a, a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. should be good weather. It feels like I have not been to a game at Dutch Fork before. So it's yeah. interesting to get down there to their stadium, see their facility, see the crowd. Man, I'm looking forward to it. It should be. I heard low ticket alert already today between those two. I mean, it should be. This is a literally a cross town matchup. Can't wait for that one. Can't wait to see some folks and can't wait to check some scores. These other big games too. It's a, it's a really big week here across the state, but moving the chains is always brought to you by founders, federal credit union for Jarrell Hendricks and John Epps. I'm Kevin Thomas. This has been our week 11 South Carolina high school football preview show. We'll catch you guys next week. Get ready for the ultimate South Carolina high school football experience with Moving the Chains. From previews to recaps, we've got you covered. Dive into our expert preview shows, predicting winners and sharing insights. Then join us post game for the thrilling recaps, exclusive interviews, and highlights you won't find anywhere else. Plus, connect with fellow fans on our Friday night spaces on Twitter slash X. No one covers South Carolina high school football like us. Join us at Moving Chains on all social media platforms and visit movingchains.com today.